Welcome, my peace, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel. We greatly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Let's talk about Shameless Season 8, Episode 6. Let's start off with, you know, Carl, he's in the kitchen. Um, Ian's in the kitchen. Frank's in the kitchen. And I believe um, Liam's in the kitchen as well. You know, Carl is like, he still owes money for his school. You know, he can't get no scholarship. He called the school. They still ain't trying to help him out. They ain't trying to finance him or get him him any money at all and so Ian asked him how much more money do you need he was like I need about four thousand five four thousand and change to Ian was like I'll give you five thousand dollars if you kill Fiona so Ian's upset he's still pissed at Fiona that she doesn't want the church she doesn't want the church to be transformed into a homeless shelter because he believed that these people these young people need to be saved and they was just like these people not like on drugs but Frank was on drugs Monica was on drugs and at one point in time Ian was on drugs too he was on ecstasy so he really want to help these kids and plus he wants to show Trevor he can make this deal happen but it ain't going down like that and actually Frank has got an employee of the month and he's happy he's feeling good about himself and then Ian was like I'll give you 10 grand and Carl was like no that's a federal crime that's a federal offense I'm not breaking the law but yeah he'll sell him some meth <laughs> and he'll trap people and kidnap people and hold them up but um Carl is still going along with his you know rehab <laughs> rehabilitation center in his house so he's still doing that and he's ha having lip um Liam help him out or whatever and Liam was like yo I need some more money man come on come on I need some more money <laughs> and so we get back to you know lip he's still looking for Brad he's with his professor he's worried about him he's trying to find him he wants to help him because he don't want to let him go because he felt like this dude Brad was there for him when he needed somebody the most and he don't want to turn his back he's actually being different than what Gallagher's usually do worried about people caring about people especially someone that's not their relative and someone that's new in their life and you know um lip has made this guy brad his sobriety coach like his family now and he's really looking out for him because he really appreciates him and plus lip like his life he likes that he owns a shop he has a wife he has a child and lip wants that too as well Some, something stable he wants to be stabled or whatever because he didn't grow up around stableness and so you got v kev and vilana or spilana um, or the Russian, you know, they're back to their threesome again, making it up, making out, having sex, doing it nasty, doing it raw, doing it bad, doing it, doing it. And, you know, um, the Russian is able to have V come and come and come and V's just having all types of orgasms. She's like vibrating and everything. Kev feels some type of way. He feels jealous about it. And he's not just, he's not liking the situation at all. Then you get um, Liam and Frank walking to school. Liam asks Frank, are we poor? <laughs> and Frank was like, no, no. He was like, then why don't we have a car like everybody else? And he was like, oh, because, you know, um, emissions is good on the environment and <laughs> and then Frank finally gives in and says, yes, we are poor. Basically, tell him the truth, Frank. You're supposed to be St. Francis. What's going on with that? So we got Kev and V and the Russian or whatever. And, you know, Kev is leaving. He's upset. He's feeling jealous. And he was like, he was telling both of them, well, you know what you guys do all day while I'm gone? You can, you guys can eat each other or lick each other all day. And so um, the Russian was like, that's not a bad idea. It sounds good. And, you know, V was like, I already have, I already came four times. And Kev is just like, oh, so Kev is upset. He's mad. He's arguing with V. He's just, he's just really upset. And so then we have the professor, the professor Ewan and, and um, Lip and some other guy looking for, you know, Brad. Brad has still disappeared. They haven't found him. He's still MIA. And then, you know, they go to his, his wife's house. And, you know, um, and Lip is just looking at her like, not not that he's attracted to her, but he wants that life. He wants that stableness. He wants to have a kid. He wants to have a family. Her, her being a mom taking care of the baby. That's something that he's never really seen growing up at all. And so they ask her if, you know, there's a track on his phone or whatever. So they're going to go look look for Brad or whatever. And then Debbie, she wakes up. She doesn't have sex because, you know, she took the ecstasy on Thursday. And she's waking up. She's freaking out. She's upset. She thinks she's pregnant. She thinks her breasts are swollen. She thinks that, you know, the sperm done reached up there to her egg. And she she's conceiving. And she's, like, scared. 
And the guy that she's where her classmates like, what's the big idea? She was like, because I don't want to have another baby, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm going to welder school to have a better life, this and that. She was like, give me the keys. Give me the keys. She go gets friends. She was like, yo, I don't want to be in another tough spot. I don't want to make another tough decision whether I should keep my baby or not. But friend, I really love, you know, and all this other stuff. So then she goes out and she's looking um for the morning after pill and she only got a certain amount of time and plus you know the guy that she was sleeping with her classmate was like yo you know we did it wrong thursday because he was like yo i tried to pull out the first time but you know you wanted me to stay or he couldn't pull out anymore and it's like damn debbie why are you making this mistake again because she saw her ex-boyfriend and she chose to do drugs and not think about the consequences and it's like she's going down that road And she doesn't have, it's like she's not talking to Fiona. She's not talking to anybody about it. It's like she started her own new life. Um, Basically where she's not even talking to her brothers. Like usually they will have conversations, especially now that she's back at home. You know, like maybe she would have talked to, you know, um, Fiona about, you know, seeing her baby's father or whatever. But she just went out and got high or whatever because now she thinks that she is an adult. But she is an adult because she does have a child. But she's not even 17 yet. Damn, she's mad young. So she's making irresponsible decision because she's acting out on emotions. And she don't know how to, she doesn't know how to deal with the situation where she's putting herself back in harm's way. Because remember, DCYF was all up in her life. Once she left, once she left the dude in the wheelchair, it just went downhill. When she went to welding school, hanging out with these older people, drinking, hanging out at bars, and feeling like an adult, and putting her and Fran in a in a position, and she didn't even remember she had sex on Thursday. Did she even free feed Fran? You know, Fran is in the tub. It's like she's going down that hill. She's going down that Monica road. She's going down that Ian road. She's going down that Limp road. She's going down that Frank road. She's going down that Fiona road. Like yo. Not you, Debbie. No, Debbie, you can't do that. You can't do that. So basically, she's out there. She's looking for the morning after pill. Frank, he's so excited. And and he thinks about his conversation he had with Liam. So he applies for a credit card. He gets a credit card. He goes to the bar. And he was talking about he purchased something online. Tommy and Kemet is like, what? You got a credit card? Where you get that from? And, you know, even, you know, Kev was like, yo, Frank, your drink is only $3. Let me get cash. He was like, no, I got a credit card. And they're like, they're shocked. And he's ordering things online. And he ordered a car. What was Frank limit? What was Frank balance on that credit card? You know what I mean? Where he can purchase a car. It says no money down, so I guess he can get anything. But (laughs) so he did get a car. And he was like, I should have got air-conditioned seats. He got himself a uh, a Chevrolet. <laughs> he got himself an American car. So, anyways, um, you know, um, Li- Liam, he he's walking home from school. He see Frank. Frank is standing next to this brand new red shiny car. You know, the car had to be red so it can be shiny and stick out with the Chevrolet sign on it. And you know, Liam is he's happy. He's soothed. He was like, "Oh my God, we got a car!" And he was like, "Frank was like, get in, let's go." He was like, "Now we're in the circles of the halves." That's what Frank actually says at the bar. And so Debbie's running around. She's trying to get the morning after pill. She goes to one drugstore and they ran out. They don't have them because evidently people stock up on the morning after pill on the weekends because they know they're going to be having unprotected sex or whatever, and which is dangerously. And then we get Fiona. Fiona, she's downstairs in the basement, you know, fixing stuff for her neighbor, Nessa. I don't know what Nessa role Nessa's going to play. If Fiona's actually going to make out with her or it's going to be something tragic. We'll see or she's gonna actually you know do something big for Fiona but anyways there's water leaking Fiona goes upstairs she finds out that Mrs. Cardinal's dead the apartment is cluttered I mean when you're talking about hoarding to the max it seems like she never left her house after a while so I wonder did she have food delivered or whatever why was she paying her bills did she just forget to pay the bills or she didn't have the money to pay the bills and so we find out that Mrs. Cardinal does really have a dog and the dog is eating on her eating on the you know the the caucus licking on her whatever the dog runs out and Nessa picks up the dog and the dog is licking all over Nessa's face Fiona is like oh you I mean, let me tell you that dog eats flesh so you know um the the pound's supposed to come and pick up the dog and Fiona's looking through the pictures and everything she find out that Mrs. Cardinal was married she lost her husband in Vietnam she had a daughter and Fiona's feeling some type of way she's feeling like feminist family being close to family and this lady was alone you know and she's afraid to be alone and then on top of that you know she's trying she wants she she's gonna think about you know 
mending wounds went in, but right so to make because of they having beef about the church or whatever, um, turning that church into a shelter. And right now, you know, who needs her? Debbie needs her. <laughs> so, anyways, Debbie is really going downhill. And so, but she's also going uphill because she's in school and she's being responsible, but taking that E after she's seen her baby's father, but she probably was going to take the E before, but she wasn't going to have, you know, her daughter with her because her daughter was supposed to go to the baby's father's, uh, her baby's father's grandmother, but was she has still done the E too as well and, and still be in the same situation? I don't know. So anyways, um. What's his name? Lip, Carl, and the professor. They're going around looking for, you know, Brad. They found Brad's truck. It's filled with donuts like he robbed the bakery. Blonde tracks in the car. And then they found Michael Jordan's MJ's arm in the back of the truck. OMG. It was like, yo, we got to get this arm out of here because if they find out that, that Brad did this because it's in his truck, he'll be skint alive. He'll be skint like a turkey. He'll be skint like a cat. And so... They get rid of the arm, and then, you know, Lip is still looking for Brad, and he's trying to find clues to find him and all this other stuff. So we get back to the bar. Kev, Kev is telling Tommy and Kermit, have they ever experiment, you know, like experiment, like, you know, sexually, physically. They was like, nah, nah, we haven't done none of that. <laughs> nah, brother, we don't know what you're talking about. And so then you have, you know, Frank, he buys clothes or whatever because he's an employee of the month. He's living a good life. He's so to- he's totally different than the guys at the bar anymore. He's like different, like he's changing. Things are happening for Frank. But, you know, when things go well for Frank, then they go awfully bad for Frank. Let's see how long this lasts for Frank and Fiona when things are kind of going good. But um, we'll see. And so then, you know, Debbie, she's she goes to another drugstore. She finds out she can't buy the pill because she's only 16. She got to be 17. She sees this lady. This lady looks like a nice little hippie and a, and a uh, punch buggy or whatever. The lady goes... Um, Deb gives her sixty dollars. The lady goes in, and Fiona, I mean, and Debbie's on the phone talking to her daughter and the, her classmate or whatever. The lady runs out trying to run to her car and take the money. Debbie beat her down. She is a gala girl when it comes to fighting. She beat her down. And I guess somebody called the cops because she beat her down. She beat her down. <laughs> And then, you know, um, I guess, you know, somebody called the cops and they got locked. They both got locked up or whatever. I'm like, yo, Deb, yo, Deb ain't playing. But remember Deb used to um, beat up girls in school that was picking her on at one point. She was fighting and that's how she met her baby's father because he was training her how to fight so Deb can fight. So anyways, uh, moving on from that, um, I was like, damn, Deb was Deb was not playing around at all. And so, you know, um, Kev, he thinks he's gay. He, he, he talks to V or whatever, and he's going to try to find him, you know, some, a, a man or whatever to make, you know, V jealous or whatever, because he was like, they have an a lesbian relationship. So he's going to try to be gay. And so he's going to look to ha- try to have a gay relationship or have a gay sexual experience with another man. So now Kev is running around town, looking at guys butts and stuff, trying to question himself, whether he's gay or not. First, he was a country hillbilly redneck. Now he thinks he's gay. He's a lost individual. And so you see why V <laughs> V is all over there on um, the Russian lady. So anyways, from that, you know, Kev is going around. He sees Ann. He asks Ann, like, yo, how did you know you was gay? He was like, oh, because I had a crush on just, Justin Beaver or whatever. He said Justin Timberlake. He said one of them. And then Kev gets a coffee or whatever. A guy buys him a coffee. And he, and he goes over to talk to the guy. I was like asking the guy, do you want to have sex with me? Do you want me? And the guy's looking at him like, yo, I'm just doing a deed, a good deed. And you know what that deed is is where people will buy pass past the buck or past the the payment whatever like when you p- pull up to a drive through when you pull up somebody already um pay for you pass and pay or something like that so anyways kev is just on the move he thinks he's gay or whatever or he wants to try it and but he does try to try it and it doesn't work out he gets in the bathroom with this guy but before then, he talks to the Russian lady, and she was like, yo, look over there. That's that's a gay dude right there. He used to be all linesman. He used to, and Kev was like, yo, he used to be a quarterback. He used to be this. He used to be that. And she was like, well, try him. And, you know, um, uh, the Russian lady, she goes, you know, a, clit- uh, a penis is like a deformed clitoris. I was like, <laughs> go. <laughs> go, Spilana. <laughs> 
So anyways, um, um, Fiona, she's still going through this house of Mrs. Cardinal going through her house. She sees a picture. She sees that she was married in May 12, 1972, and her husband died. He was a Vietnam vet and all this other stuff. She's telling V that and V and her start talking. And she was like, you know what? I think I, I can't, I'm not, a, V is like, you know, Fiona, you're so beautiful, but I'm not attracted to you. You don't make my, you don't make my coochie go hoo, hoo, hoo. And so, um, and so then, you know, V is like, well, I don't think I'm gay. I don't think I'm gay or whatever. I don't think I'm a lesbian. And so then um, Fiona goes, well, the Russian invasion must have came in. That's must have what happened. But no, you're not gay. You just like to be dominant. You like the way she treats you and boss you around. So then, you know, um, V is realizing that, oh, that's she's not. It's not the orgasm that, you know, Spilana gives her or whatever the Russian lady gives her. It's, you know, the dominance that she puts forth and V is like, I don't think uh, I like to be dominated or whatever, but she does come all crazy, but maybe she's coming because she's being dominated and told what to do and being bossed around. And that's what she likes and that's what she wants. And so then, you know, Frank, Frank goes out, Frank is riding around with, you know, Liam. They got Bluetooth or whatever. They playing that music. Frank is like, pump that music. So, you know, the Gallic girls are doing good. They got a house now. They got their house. They don't got the jacuzzi anymore, but they got a two car. They got two cars to their house. So, so they are a, a household of two cars now. They're moving on up, moving on up. And Fiona owns a apartment complex. So, you know, she is doing mad good. And Carl's trying to get back into military school and Lip has stayed clean and Liam is going to a private school and Ian, he is a EMT. So, and then Deb, she's going to be a welder in school, even though they're making their mistakes, they're really trying to stay on, on, on their path. But basically they always got each other around no matter what. But anyways, so Debbie, she's locked up, she's in jail or whatever. And then we got, you know, Kev, he's still at the bar. He's looking down at Kermit's ass crack or whatever. And Kermit's looking at him like, stop looking at me. <laughs> and pulls up his pants. But he doesn't say that. He's looking at Kev like, yo, you're weird, son. And so that's when, you know, um, the Russian lady and Kev, they start talking. She was like, look over there. You know, penis, vagina, whatever, whatever pleasure you make you feel good. A uh, clitoris is a, a penis is a deformed clitoris. He goes in the bathroom and the guy starts kissing on Kev's neck. And the guy says, hey, give me a blowjob. Kev is like, nah, I, I don't do for Kev is Kev was about to, he did kneel down, but he realized that he's not attracted to him and he's not getting hard. And so he realized that he's not gay. Or he realized that he's not attracted to guys. It's like he be going on these tangents. He just be all off. He be he be all off in La La Land. I what happened to being from Kentucky and being <laughs> country or being a hillbilly or whatever. So Kev and V talk and V lets you know Kev know that hey listen you know what it is. It's it's me being dominated you know, and all this other stuff. So now Kev is like, so how do I dominate you? So now Kev got another project. This is why that buy never be making no money and stuff like that. So I'm like, damn, and they be wilding. And then Frank is riding around with Liam. I thought he was saying he's going to pick up some holes, but he went up picking up some holes, some cakes or whatever. And then, um, Lip at Lip and uh, Lip is still running around with the professor looking at what Carl looking for Brad and they can't find them. Then they find a lady. They go to the donut shop. They find a lady that Brad was messing around with. She's laying on the floor with her drawers on, pants halfway down. Why is the bakery guy letting her just sleep there in the back? I guess he's like, you know what? This happens all the time. Why bother calling the cops? You know, <laughs> he just let her sleep back there. So what is a sanitary hell going on in that place? So anyways, Lip goes around the block. But before then, he argues with the professor. The professor is telling Lip he needs to let Brad go. This codependent relationship should be over. And yes, you know, um, Lip is codependent with people. He gets attached and he doesn't know how to let go sometimes. And he goes crazy. But he's really down here for Brad because he feels like if Brad can't make it, he can't make it. And he shouldn't put that on Brad or put that on himself. Just because he didn't make it doesn't mean he's not going to make it because that could be a problem where if Brad doesn't get clean, does that mean that 
um, Lip is going to feel like he can't make it either as well. Lip needs to be back in college somewhere. Or like, I don't know. So anyways, Lip finds, so him and the prep, him and the professor have an argument because the professor's like, let him go, let him be. And, you know, Lip was like, yo, if you don't want to help, I'm not going to give up on him or whatever. You know, you're not going to tell me what to do, you old drunk, whatever. So the professor bounced, Lip gets back in the car. Carl tells, you know, Lip, why do you care so much? Who cares about that dude? So Lip was like, I'm going to take a walk around the block. Lip finds him, finds Brad. You know, they drink coffee or whatever. The news comes on and they talk about the Michael Jordan. Um, And then, you know, Brad was like, yo, who Whoever did that, they're going to skin him alive. And, and, and Lip was like, that was you, son. That was you. And so they take him. They, he drinks coffee. They take him back to his wife's house. And she's not letting him in. He gets back in the car. So I guess maybe Carl, he's going to go to Carl Rehab. And Carl's going to lock him up in the basement or whatever. But he did punch the shit out of Lip again. I'm like, damn. Lip, you got to get like Debbie. Debbie be fighting. <laughs> And so then Debbie, she's, she gets bailed out. But first she talks to the lady that, you know, tried to rob her for $60 and found out that she never had kids. So we understand why that lady took off with the money. Maybe she was a drunk or whatever, or maybe who knows, but she doesn't believe in killing kids. She, I mean, she doesn't believe in the morning after pill because the baby's not formed yet. She don't believe in none of that yet none of that so that's why she lied (laughs) that's why she pretended like she was gonna go get the pills for deb and and that's all deb need deb is going through a whole roller coaster just because of this mistake that she makes so hopefully she learns from it so anyways deb gets bailed out of jail the cop says yo you got you got a black guy you got a gay guy you got a terrorist and you got a man with a baby here to bail you out. <laughs> and so then they run to the drugstore and then the terrorist dude said, Hala, ka, 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 ma, or whatever in the store, people started running. So Deb is able to get the pills. So hopefully she gets to take him in time. So she won't have another baby or whatever that she can't take care of right now. So then, um, I was like, damn. So then Fiona, you know, talks to, you know, the, um, Mrs. Cardinal's niece and she doesn't really know Mrs. Cardinal because Mrs. Cardinal's daughter died years ago and, um, the, the niece, she doesn't really know her grandmother or whatever. And she doesn't really care. She's throwing all the stuff away. Fiona rescued the picture, but Fiona's realizing that she doesn't want to die alone. She doesn't want to be alone. And she sees how it so important family is and so now she goes to apologize to Ian Ian trying to hear it Ian was like you change you're just like everybody else you just care about money and Fiona was like I just finally want something good I just finally want to better my life yeah Fiona life's been shit remember when she had that job cleaning up shit and stuff like that and remember how she used to hustle and try to make the money how they used to eat like terrible food never had food to eat they didn't have running water and shit like that she ain't trying to go back to that she's like yo if if i can make it they can make it and that's very true but they also got you guys also got frank jeans and frank is kind of a genius where he can figure out stuff and be smart so anyways um, but they did, but they did have some, some badness going on, but it's almost like Fiona's turning her back because when her community was being, um, gentrified or whatever, they wasn't feeling it. But now she's gentrifying her community because she got property and she's thinking differently. She's not th- she's not thinking as like a poor person or someone that doesn't have anything or just trying to be off the system or trying to survive. She's actually making it and she don't want nobody to rain on her parade. She want to finally have something, but she's also turning her back on where she came from as well that's what Ian thinks so we'll see Ian ain't trying to forgive her about that so Fiona was like yo if I knew it was you trying to buy the church I would have talked to you and told you where I was coming from whatever I wouldn't have been dirty about it or whatever Um, but they're not seeing eye to eye on the situation right now not at all not even close not even by a long shot so um, they find Michael Jordan's arm and it's all good. And, you know, hopefully Deb gets that pill. You know, Frank gets to work and he finds out that he's being let go, man. Like, damn, Frank is just getting up there and he, how is he going to pay for that car and all that other stuff? Uh, does Frank have two jobs? Maybe Frank now is going to get a job at the school. We'll see what happens. And how did, damn, how did Frank get that credit, yo? That credit was crazy. And so then at the end, 
Fiona goes and rescue a picture of Mrs. Cardinal and put it on the wall under the light or whatever. So it could be like a resting spot. And then also Fiona saves Mrs. Cardinal's dog. And so she's going to keep the dog. So Fiona is just learning to be more caring too as well. Her and Lip are going through that process of caring for other people, being sympathetic and all that other good stuff. So we'll see what happens. Peace. I'm out. One love.